Steve from uh, Park Ridge. Uh, I am the co-chair of the trustee development committee, along with uh, Caitlin Hull, who is the uh, director in Maywood, who is behind the scenes and back in there. Uh, and we wel I welcome you to the strategic planning and more session. Uh, we're very glad to have you. We're very excited to be here. Thank you, first of all, to uh, Mimi Hoy, who's the director here at Hasbro Height. And uh, uh, we're here to talk about um, uh, about strategic planning and more. But first, before we start that, uh, we have the president of the Buffalo's Executive Board here tonight, uh, Adele Puccio, uh, who's the director of Fairwood, and we're going to take a few words. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I really, really appreciate when trustees show this much interest and come to these sessions because it's a great way to network, to share ideas, and to get to know your fellow trustees. Strategic planning is very important. We all know that. We all need a good strategic plan. And I think that tonight we will learn a lot about that. So we need great things that you can take back to your libraries and hopefully share with your neighbor libraries. We like to share. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miguel. Tonight's program format is uh, based on a panel format with these four fine folks up in front. Uh, we have also gotten a number of questions pre this meeting, uh, but we have found uh, now that everybody's back in, uh, we're together again, uh, we found out our last meeting was much better. If you want to be interactive, if you have a question, you don't need to wait to just raise your hand, we'll call on you and you can ask any one of these four or five folks uh, a question about strategic planning or actually since it's and more, if you want to go up uh, after we get done with that, we can do that. So uh, without further ado, uh, each one of these four folks is going to introduce themselves uh, and a little bit about uh, what they feel about strategic planning. And we'll start with uh, Larry Bergman, trustee from uh, Livingston, who is also a member of the trustee development. Great. Welcome, everybody. Um, as Tom said, I'm Larry Bergman. Um, I've been a trustee since libraries were founded. <laughs> no, Andrew Carnegie was a personal friend of mine. Like that's the whole of the story. But, um, and I served as um, several um, committee chairs, and now I'm co-president of the Livingston Library. I answer this question. Okay. There are some questions, uh, some background questions. Like, uh, what committees do you know, your library have? Well, we have three standing committees, which is finance committee, personnel, and policy. We also have a building and grounds committee, and we have a strategic plan committee, which is an ad hoc committee. It uh, operates when we're doing strategic plans. And this is how we hear for strategic plans. And um, on Tuesday night, um, we uh, voted upon a, a consulting company to help us do the strategic plan. And we appointed the strategic plan committee. In fact, Nora, who's one of our trustees, is the chair of our strategic plan committee. Okay. Um, I've served on several committees. I was chair of policy for many years. I was also treasurer of the library for several years. And um, from there, I became, um, you know, a, a co-president. And as co-president, I do sit on the finance committee now um, and also on building grants. We have meetings as needed. The committee, I'm sorry, the board meets regularly, but the committees meet as needed. There are certain times when it's more intense. Um, the, uh, one of the chief responsibilities of the personnel committee is the evaluation of the director. And uh, that starts um, 
stuck in the early fall, and um, it's a very intensive time for the committee. And in fact, the entire board is involved. We actually did all the evaluations and submitted to the committee, which does the synopsis of our comments. And from there, it's generated a final, a final plan, um, an evaluation um, for the director. Um, other committees, I mean, buildings and grounds has a meeting on a fairly regular basis lately. Um, finance, again, meets primarily during budget times um, and, and policy we meet as, again, as needed. We try to review the policies at least once a year and update them. In fact, the policy committee met last month and presented some changes to existing policies, just updating them and keeping them um, in line with, with couples uh, regulations. So that's done um, as as the and as I said, the strategic plan committee meets one of the strategic plans, and uh, hopefully the plan, the strategic plan will be finished by the end of the year. Yeah, she would oh, so, you know, I'll be I'll be I'll be quick for a second. I think you're gonna hear a lot in this little synopsis here that we're all gonna say the same thing. We have uh, three standing committees, finance, building grounds, personnel. Uh we don't meet re regularly at all. It's when we need it. We don't have just a meeting for the sake of meetings, there's gotta be something to discuss, uh, you know, problem with personnel, beginning of the year, keeping the budget. Other than that, they're just as needed. Um also, our policies, uh, and we rarely meet, you know, there's a bunch of policies we have. Um, I'm, I'm about to ask for a bylaws one because I've never got, I've been on the board, I think, I think 15, 16, 17 years in that range. And we've never, I've, I've never even looked at the bylaws before. And, and I just read another day, and it's like we're not doing what it, somebody else 20 years ago thought we should be doing. So we're going to be doing that. Um, that's what we have. Uh, I've served on all of them. I, I usually serve by all of them. When I'm retired, I have time, I do it. Um, committee's function, like I said, just as we need them. Um, and strategic plan is something we never had either. And we just really took this about six or eight months ago. We started one. And and I guess nobody ever thought we needed one. But now, in my mind, why numbers are changing. You know, if I look at our numbers of, of hardcover media that's going out versus electronic, I remember having fights got to be 10, 10, 10, 12 years ago with Robert uh, White that he just said, oh, this electronic stuff is nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense, Robert. It's like it's the future. And if anybody's been around for a while, the, the Northeast portion there, we, we actually had a, a, a small consortium put together with digital media for a while before the bubbles were fully embraced it. Um, but if you look at our numbers now, you know, from say, pre pandemic, hardcover media is down. But if I include, um digital media with that we're, we're saying pretty pretty consistent uh strategic plan you know i, I look at i look at the strategic plan like this because things are changing i'm sure if you get my car right now and drive to say st louis without a map and i would get there but there's a bunch of long terms along the way but i could get there in a few days have a map and go right there right and that's why the strategic plan just figure out where where do we think this is going that's great. Um, hi, Lauren Segura. I'm a trustee at Minimum Park, and I have been a trustee for just about two and a half years now, so I'm relatively new. Um, we have all the same committees as everyone mentioned, except that our strategic planning committee is actually a standing committee. And we use that to hold ourselves accountable and to work through tactical plans with our director to make sure we're working against the goals that have been outlined in our strategic plan. Um, just like everyone else, our committees meet as needed. I would say some meet monthly, like buildings and grounds. Others, maybe every other month. It just depends on kind of what's on the docket. Um, so those are kind of committee practices that work well. Um, but I am very similar to that. I'm a huge believer in having a strategic plan. You need the path to go forward. Um, but also, for us, especially as we go into budget season, having a strategic plan that speaks directly to what our community is looking for and asking for 
is a huge factor in when we have to ask for money over a third of the balance. So it has become a very vital tool for us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Bigalano. I'm a trustee in Westwood Public Library. I've been on the board there for 12 years. Uh, and as others have mentioned, yeah, we certainly have a budget and finance committee. We have a building and grounds committee, which is act actually very active and uh, works directly with our administrator on uh, changes to the library that we feel are essential. Uh, and we have a policy and a personnel committee. Um, I'm currently working on a new strategic plan for the board in 26. I've worked on the last two. Um, and what we do at our library, we try to uh, we ask for volunteers, but sometimes we encourage uh, a new member to join the strategic planning committee. We've done that the last two times that we put one together. I just thought I would read um, a couple of things from our current plan. And we start out with, you know, what is the purpose? The purpose of a strategic plan is to provide guidance to both the library board and staff when considering implementation of new services, programs, areas of treatment, and developments. This communication tool developed collaboratively among staff and trustees. The plan includes our mission and goals and specific measurable objectives. Short range three year plan also provides means by which objectives and accomplishments can be reviewed and revised periodically. Even though it's a three-year plan, it, we don't wait three years to, to think about what have we done, what should we have done. It's 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 kind of a uh, it's actively looked at each and every year. Um, and just as in in business strategic plans that look at the market, you know our market is the community and our patrons. So a big part of the plan, while we're we're reviewing it and putting it together. We try to get a good view of how it has the community changed over the last three years. Uh, we also have you know, data about the library. What are the trends in e-contact use in online databases? How should uh, how should we work with our director, who's really the CEO of the library? How should we work with her to uh, allocate the resources that we have to achieve the goals and the objectives that we set? Um, and the last thing I thought I would mention is, is, is our last statement in our current plan. It's, and it's about adapting and evolving. To stay relevant to patrons changing needs and interests, the library continuously adapts. It is a learning organization that invests in staff technology and infrastructure to improve essential services. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, Excuse me. Before we go on, I just want to mention that um, both Larry and Mike are also part of the Trustee Development Committee. And sitting in the back there with Mimi, who I introduced before as our hostess, she is also on the committee. And we have Lisa Trainer and Lynn Kloss sitting back there. They are also on the committee. Uh, I won't mention uh, <laughs> Uh, Lauren, Lauren was a member of our committee for a number of years, and she has uh, taken her uh, talents to the Public Relations Committee. Yeah, but uh, she's welcome back at any time, oh, yes. and all of you are welcome if you'd like to join as well. Um, oh, and there is one administrative thing. I, it's been a couple of years since I've done this in person. I keep forgetting this one, but uh, if you need to use the restroom, they're right out through the door here, and just before this, instead of making a right to go down the stairs, you make a left, and there's a facility there. Or you can go to the, and Amy's graciously said you can go to the library and use their facilities if you need to. Thank you. Uh, what do we, what, now that you've heard from these four, we uh, got a number of questions uh, sent to us previous to the meeting that we're going to ask the panelists to uh, respond to. And as I said, if you have a comment about what they have to say, or if you have a question, please uh, feel free to, to jump in and ask. It's uh, very interactive from this point on. The first question is, we're a small library. 
And what is your advice about how to organize a, a strategic plan? Some trustees think that a library director should be the person doing everything. Without much money, some are considering hiring a consultant. What do you think about this? And can you recommend consultants, companies, et cetera? I'll jump in. Um, so our approach that we felt very passionately about <laughs> is that this is a collaborative effort. And what we did is we assembled a core committee, but then we opened it up to begin with sessions from different stakeholders. So not only did we have our library director involved, but we had our um, head ch children's librarian, we brought in stakeholders from the council, we brought in, we, we invited PTA members, we brought in other leaders within the community to try to get different perspectives as we moved forward. Um, I can't really speak to the consultant question. I know several libraries have taken that path, but for us, we were lucky enough that we did have trustee members who have had strategic plan experience in the past who were able to guide us through the process. Um, but I think that, you know, our library director served as such an asset with all the information about what's going on in the library, what she's seeing in trends, all analysis of all the data, but for us, we wanted to make sure that we got the full picture. So I, I would encourage everybody not to just put it on one person's shoulder, but really work together as a community. I don't know if anyone wants to add. Hey, um, Larry, you want to tell us what you guys just decided last night? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, Livingston is uh, just about to embark on our fourth strategic plan. And the first strategic plan we did in-house. And it was a good strategic plan. Uh, there was a lot of work on the part of the board, uh, administration, staff, and um, we reached out to members of the community. We formed focus groups. Um, to come in and to tell us what they thought of the library. Um, I do have to tell you that one of our frustrations with that was reaching out to non-library users. A lot of people who were at the focus groups came and, oh, we love the library, we love this, we love that. We know what's good. We want to know what needed to be improved upon. But uh, we worked hard, and I think we came up with a very good strategic plan for three years. And then our second strategic plan, we hired Leslie Berger, who I know is, um, she was um, formerly the director of Princeton, and she has spoken to several bottles events and trustee development events. And um, she really spearheaded um, more in-depth study on what we needed and uh, even better outreach to, to the community. And then after that, we rehired, after three years, we rehired Leslie to review and to tweak basically the other, the, the second strategic plan. And also since things are changing, you know, it, it wasn't, just a rehash, but it, it definitely had some new goals and things that, that, that we had worked on it and, and we had met. On this strategic plan, we again decided to go with a consultant and we chose a consultant called, um, <laughs> constructive <laughs> disruption. <laughs> and, um, we evaluated two companies and um, we decided to go with this one um, because even though neither of them are local, um, one of the principals of this of this company uh, knows Buckles and was a former director within Buckles. Was the director of Rutherford at one time. Um, and uh, so that is one of the reasons why why we chose we chose them. Uh, also, we just formed a, a our strategic plan um, committee, and uh, a lot of thought was put into the composition of that committee. Everybody on the board wanted to be part of the committee, 
And unfortunately, we can only have four since we have a nine member board and you can't have more than four people on, on a committee or else it becomes a board meeting. And um, we chose four people who I think all of them had very good outreach into the community and to different constituencies within the community, which is very important. And all of the members were chosen because they're really forward thinkers. Our town is changing, and we want to be sure that our library is ready for the future. We don't want to, you know, suddenly find, oh my goodness, there's all this development and there's all these people. What are we going to do with them? So we really are laying out a plan today for our three year strategic plan, but also really how it will impact the library beyond the three years. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> we, we started out as the seven, really it was five months, there were seven members on the board, two of the superintendent and the, uh, and the uh, mayor. I haven't seen them in 15 years. They don't come, they're both representatives. But those two people are, don't serve in any committees. It's basically five of us that run it. They're all seven to go to meetings, but five of us are really doing the work. Um, and so when we decided we wanted to do a strategic plan, we started to do it ourselves. And the first thing was a questionnaire. And we 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 came to the realization that we wrote to slave people. We're not librarians, though, to five of us. Right. And and I get around enough and, and I make it habit of when I'm someplace else, when I just go up to Provincetown, Massachusetts, I walk into the library and I start talking to them how you do this, how you do that, what's going on, and you know what, what works, what doesn't work, how many people do you have coming here, all those thousand questions. Anyway, so so we're working on this and we finally decided the five of us that no, we need we need some direction. And what was interesting to me is so we put together we we had put together a questionnaire ready to send out. Um, and the one we got from the consultant was very close to the same thing, except it cost us seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> but and 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 so what we did then is is oh when we got a response, we got first of all, our town has 2,200 households, the population roughly 8, 2,300 households. We got 845 responses. Which we were thrilled with. That means basically you would, a third of all the households build their own sense. And we didn't discriminate library uses, non uses. Everybody got one. And we got, you know, a lot of the library users certainly did it, but a lot of other people said what we'd like. And then we, and then the second step of the, after that was we put together the little meetings of, um, our thought leaders, people that, that hold sway in town, not elected like officials, but people that just, you know, the head of the authority club, the head of this, the head of that. Um, and then we did parents of young kids, we did young adults, uh, we did working people. Um, uh, and a lot of good information came out of that. But it's interesting to a group of like five, six, or seven people. You know, there's always the one who's going to take charge, so the one who just starts talking, and everybody else says that's right. But so you get really out of the seven groups we had, we had probably seven people that really stood out. And, and said a lot. Um, anyway, so then we finally worked out. We're just in the final draft. We got the final draft of our strategic plan. It's taken six months to get this point. We'll finalize it on next board meeting. I expect we'll see that we from the Wednesday. Um, and it, it's been an interesting experience. You know, this is trying to predict the future. You know, if we were in the 40s or 50s or 60s, you know, people came, you got books and they took books out, you put books back and blah, blah, blah. Um, but now as, as we're switching to more and more electronic media, you know, when you ask, what do you want in the library, you know? And one of the biggest things we, we want more meeting space. We want to be able to come there and have meetings of four or five, six people, and we don't have facilities for that right now. So we're gonna we're gonna build that um inside inside the existing outlook. Uh, that's it, I'll stop there. <laughs> You know, in Westwood, we are a small library, but there's certain things that I think apply to any size library. When you're starting out, trying to put together a strategic plan, and something that we do is we do look at the um, the resources that are on the New Jersey uh, Library Center, 
Uh, they have a lot of good information there. They have sample um, strategic plans of other libraries and, and and reviewing other libraries' plans you know, is a is a worthwhile exercise because there's a pattern that kind of emerges. And, um, whether the library is is similar to our size, we have a population of eleven thousand. Um, there are there are certain things that are are trends or themes that emerge, and and that helps you to you know, say ask the right questions. Uh, and I know people say, well, is there a best practices for a strategic plan? I don't really think so. I think whatever plan you have in your library is the best plan. Um, so uh, that's our approach to it. And um, and so far, it's worked well. The last two times we've done it, and we might be the same on the plan that we're working on now. Thank you. Um, I heard a couple of things in here where we were talking about a two-year plan, a three-year plan, a five-year plan. Uh, is there a best practice for how often or how long your plan could be? And there was also a question about once I start a plan, a committee is formed and we get into it, is there an, a ballpark figure as to how long it should take you to get from start to finish? It's also about six to seven months to, to really put a plan together. Uh, that, that's the well time frame. And the plan that we prepared, which is kind of a draft plan, we went to the entire board, usually in October, November, for, for discussions. So these are, this is our recommended plan. That's what the, the strategic plan committee does. And, and the board members uh, have their own ideas and their own suggestions and we go back and we incorporate as many of those as we can and then bring it back usually in December uh, for everyone to vote on. And that, that's how we've done it. And, you know, there's no right number, whether it's two years, three years, or five years. The thing that I, I, I would say I find is the goals of a strategic plan may often last much longer than the two, three, or five years. Goals are, you know, are, are strategic and longer lasting. What doesn't last as long are the objectives. The objectives tend to change. So as we go through this exercise and, and take a look at, you know, we tend to have six or seven goals in each of our plans that we've done so far. Uh, and we may have five, six, seven objectives for each of those goals. The objectives are the ones that can change Every ten years. Yeah, I mean, I would add on to we we follow a very similar cadence when we did our strategic plan. It was about six months um, from start to finish, and we timed it so that we had the first draft right around budget season, and then it was prepared for the next year. I think when we were looking at, did we do two years, three years, or five years? You know, with COVID, it taught us that perhaps five years is a bit too long. We want to be able to be a little bit nimble, but there were also some concerns about really having the time to meet some of these strategic objectives. So for us, this the three-year mark felt like the right point for us, that we could make move the needle the way we wanted it to. It wasn't under a time constraint. We would be able to move forward. So that I would encourage everyone to just really think about what's feasible um, and take it that way. I mean, it's what Mike said, some of these larger goals um, and some of the larger strategies do carry on, but I think for us, we really wanted to make sure that we can make some measurable results against the plan within the time that we had it, just to speak back to our community, because we did the same as everybody else. We did several surveys, several focus groups. Um, we had a lot of opinionated people who had very strong feelings, um, and we actually did get a lot of non-library users who chimed in on it, but um, yeah, I agree. There's probably no right length of plan. Um, we've been using a strategic plan for three years. Um, we felt that two was really not enough time to get it going and to, and to achieve the goals. And we also felt that five, for us, was long because things change so quickly. 
that when you lay out a plan today, for five years hence, things can look extremely different at that mm -hmm. point. So we actually been working with a media bar. And um, as you said, the strategic plan committee is made up of trustees. Um, it's made up of administration because administrations of the professionals and the trustees are not. That's it's important to keep that in mind. And also, I think the most important piece, it's also made up of staff. We have to realize that staff are really the front line that interfaces with the public on a daily basis. And they probably have a lot more information than trustees or even administration knows, only because they, they're constantly, as I said, interfacing with the public. Do, uh, do any you also include uh, members of the of the uh, community as part of your strategic plan, or do you just limit it to the survey that you keep setting out? The survey. Uh, we predominantly did the survey, but there were a few leaders within the community who did individual focus groups. But they're not; they weren't part of writing or drafting. Uh, one of the questions we have. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just going to add that uh, we, we try to involve our friends organization in coming together with time as well because they're they're important. I mean, they, they the fundraising that they do is uh, uh, is a great value to all of them. So we want to make sure that uh, they're going to do it also. Um, also, uh, the um, the development of a survey is uh, was that a difficult exercise? Is there a is there a best practice kind of uh, ability to write a survey, uh, or is it just somewhat of a common sense type of thing? Um, I think it's really about knowing what you the information that you need. So we approached it from two ways. When we were writing our survey questions, there were trends that we were seeing within the library that we wanted to validate. Um, but also there were gaps in services or even within our collection that we wanted to ask about to see if that's something the community was looking for. We also asked a lot of questions about why people weren't using the library, which was really interesting to get that feedback on as well. I would say, in terms of best practices, we just really worked together as a group and logically just worked through kind of what is the data that we would need in order to put forward a plan. We um we also based it off the vision we had for the library. So I know I think it was Dennis talked about um, and Larry about a community meeting center. So our vision that we all came up with as a group to test against is to be a central community gathering place that connects all people and encourages the exchange of ideas and information. So with that in mind, knowing the way we want to move, it was easy to kind of gear some of the questions to see if it was aligned with what the public wanted. Uh, at the end of the day, how long are your strategic plans in, in terms of volumes of paper, if you know? Are they, are they two or three pages long, or do they tend to be in the 30s? Uh, what can you tell us about that? Okay, ours is 10 pages, but what we did, because we did release it to the public, um, we designed it in Canva. So what you'll see on ours, it's up, posted on our website, lots of bullets, lots of graphics, quick hits with stats. Um, what we wanted to do is make it easily digestible for anyone who wanted to read it. Yeah. We also had two versions of the strategic plan. We had, um, a sort of a synopsis um, of the key points, which is on our website, which was distributed to the public, and a longer version, uh, which we use within the library, which grants a lot more specifics on how to achieve those goals. So our plan, by a student plan, have, have been uh, nine pages. But one thing we added last time, we're going to do it again this time, is we started the plan with the age of accomplishments of the last plan. 
So of the objectives that we had set, what ones have we achieved? And so we try to spell that out by the plan. The entire plan is posted on the library website. Um, certainly, I haven't shared with anybody here. And it's also sent by email to the mayor, every member of the town council, and the board administrator. Thank you. Um, once a plan is in place, whose job is it to basically manage and monitor the plan to make sure that it goes and fulfills what it was set out to do? I think that's an, I think that's an easy question. It, it's really, it's, it's the entire board. I mean, that's what we should be doing as trustees, I feel. Uh, secondly, it's, you know, the, again, the director is, is intimately involved as a member of the team to draft the plan, as well as to review changes that we would want to incorporate into the plan over the, over the three years that, that it's in effect. Uh, so I, I can say everybody, everyone plays a role. It's, it's important for everyone to contribute. Got it. Um, each month in our report from the director, she also outlines um, a part of the strategic plan and then what we have done that month to further the goals of that strategic plan. So that's done by, by the director and uh, it's monitored monthly. Um, I'm learning here as much as anybody because, like I said, this is our first plan. So I'm learning how we can help and follow this. We do something similar as Larry. So we do it every quarter. Next question. Um, I have a, if you have a plan in place, uh, and Larry, this kind of leads right into your because you did hire an outside consultant. Uh, as we, I'm putting on my own, I'm the treasurer of the board, right? So I can put my finance hat on for a second. Where do I get the money to do this? <laughs> um, we have some reserves that, <laughs> that we use for um, things like this. I mean, we knew that we were going to do a strategic plan. So it wasn't a um, surprise. Um, the strategic plan um, is, um, I think, quite costly, but we're expecting a A1 type of a plan. We're paying just under $30,000 for this plan. <laughs> My heart's still beating. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can get So we have considered this a, a, a number of times. You know, we need a consultant, and can we afford a consultant? And uh, I have to say, we decided that we, we can't afford it. And we will that we have done all right not to have it done. Uh, um, we, we, about 10 years ago, we had a few consultants come in, and my job was in the board then was to get everybody's strategic plan. I had a stack, and we brought them in, and they would tell us, Oh, well, we worked on part bridges, and they looked at it, it was really thin, and it wasn't much to it, but it went to $12,000. I don't understand. I can't. From that moment, I swore we'd never pay for it. We'd never pay a consultant. I, I just, you have a, a sturdier heart than I have. I couldn't tell. I mean, people you don't think are watching the library budget, but they are. And you meet people like, oh, I spent this money on, on, on this thing. Or what's this library think and how much is it costing? Well, it doesn't cost you any more or any less. We just have it. But to, to pay for a consultant to do that, I just couldn't do it. And I've seen some really good ones done by boards with just on their own. Oh, let me echo what you just said. You know, we just did spend like fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars in arms. And I and I think about how far along we were with our first questionnaire and if we were headed in the right direction, that would do it again. I would not hire a consultant. Certainly next time we do this in three years from now, if we do it again, 
No. You know, just you learn, you know, it's not like you're reinventing the wheel. It's not like you're the first person ever to have a library that you try to think three years in a row. Just everybody else is the world around you. Just look at those. And you, and you, you have everything you need. I mean, what are you, what are you paying at somebody for other than your expertise that that 30 other people or 72 people in Buffalo's already have? Well, 71 because we didn't have one. Um, the reason why we went with a consultant is um, because, as I said, the first one we did it on our own, and I thought it was a pretty good strategic plan. But using a professional, I think, was able to go deeper than we were able to do. And yes, it is a lot of money, but I consider it an investment in the library's future. And that's very important. I just wanted to add to Larry because I am from Livingston as well. So I'm um, of that thinking that somebody mentioned about making sure that that, in, that that we are not library professionals. The trustees are not library professionals. So I think that's why we feel this is a valid um, investment that we're hiring a professional. And people also spoke about the future. So yes, our director is really fabulous and it does have her finger on it, but these are people who are coming from nationwide who are seeing what the forward thinking trends are. And we wanted all that. And our first, when we had the burgers, they did more than nine pages. And it's not, what we're not paying just for um, a survey, it's a survey and focus groups and other kind of groups and, and um, meetings with the board before the end it's just it's there's a lot of things included so it, i just you know it's not like one is right and one is wrong but i feel like kind of larry was like out there saying well i'm the only one that got one no one else thinks you get people i'm saying there are there are good reasons to invest in that because this is the library's future when it comes to uh <clears throat> The survey. Um, how important? I think you touched on this briefly, but it was specifically I'd like to go over it again. Is how important is it that you survey non-users? And number one, and number two, how do you get that survey to everybody to whom you wish to get it? I'll try first pass. Um, as a trustee, my role. I think is to make the library relevant to the population. And there are book readers and there are people. If there, you know, I'm always amazed that when if I go down there, I go down there a lot. If I'm retired, I don't most people I hang out at the library. But but how many people are just down there if they're studying, they have a small group, they talk, um, they they get coffee at the local place, they and 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 they sit outside this time of year now and have a little coffee flash kind of thing. Um and, and there's people that are studying. There's, there's one guy who comes, he's an older guy, and he's trying to get his license back. I guess he lost at some point in time. And he sits at the computer all day long at the New Jersey, whatever website, and he'll still go question after question. But my point is, I, I want to fill the seats. You know, the, the borrow, I think we get an average, I think the last thing we know is $350 a family for the library, go to the library. A lot of money. I want to give them my my sense. I want to give them the value for that money. So we pounded the pavement, literally. Um, we made a list of groups in our community, decided which board member might have access to them, and then those board members personally went out and contacted people. We also made a list within our own social circles of people we know who are non-library users, and we directly personally asked them to complete the survey. So it was a lot of work to get the right people to answer the survey, but I think ultimately, you know, we had a really good sample number for us being a, a smaller town. Um, but yeah, it was it it was a lot of hand holding or, you know, hey, we've never seen you at the library. Can you fill this out for us? Um, but that was that we found was the best way. I mean we also posted it everywhere, social media, our friends group pushed it out. We have an email newsletter. 
The town has an email newsletter. All of our schools send it out for us as well. The Girl Scout sends it out. The Boy Scout sends it out. I mean, we tapped every possible. We tapped the church communities in our town. We tapped everybody possibly so that we could reach as many people. We also had um, our director runs a book club at the senior home in our town. She brought paper surveys. So we had a bunch of people fill out paper surveys if you weren't comfortable online. <laughs> um, and we also worked with a small group of kids and had them answer some of the questions that were appropriate for kids about what they wanted to see more of. Kids are very opinionated, so it was really <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a lot of, it was a lot of pounding the pavement to make sure we got the right people there. Other question. Did yeah. you get more people join the library because of that? We did. So we did have an uptick in card numbers, uh, because we actually got a lot of responses of, oh, post COVID, you're open those hours. Oh, this is what you offer. It was actually a really great way to publicize even more, despite the fact that we all feel like we are publicizing everything constantly. It was actually pretty surprising how many people didn't realize the breadth of what we offer, how long we're open, what we're doing. So we did see an uptick. Surveys are important. Who else? Listening all the time. Yeah. Listening all the time because your patrons will lead you to do some of the things that you might not have thought of. And, you know, our experience with COVID taught us a lot of things that we didn't think we knew. One was just the book clubs. People would love to participate in book clubs because they possibly do it without coming to the library. So we use Zoom and, and we have a, and I'll just get going to see here at this meeting so that uh, more and more people can participate in programs remotely. I mean, that is one big benefit that I feel library has achieved in, in the COVID experience. Uh, the other thing that happened was a lot of people can't come to the library. They'd like to be able to get their books at, uh, at, at times when the library is closed. So uh, our director was able to apply for a grant for smart lockers. And those are used regularly by a group of patrons. Uh, but we, we didn't have that in our strategic plan the last time when we put it together. But again, listening to your patrons all the time, they will lead you to make good decisions and incorporate uh, new services and practices. Uh, part of your answer uh, might lead into the next question is, did, how did, how, or if it did, did COVID, did COVID, did COVID impact your strategic plan, either in being able to implement things you wanted to do, or did it delay, or did you have no uh, impact whatsoever? Um, I joined the library board in COVID, and at the time, there was a strategic plan in place, and what ended up happening to the best of my knowledge, is that things were just delayed. So we actually started this strategic planning process in 2021. It pushed us to look ahead when we saw things opening up. So COVID was actually a catalyst for us to move forward. Um, COVID obviously affected the library greatly. In terms of strategic planning, it basically, um, we were able to provide not, uh, many of the same services during COVID uh, on a remote basis. And we had um, with shopping bags that people put things on hold and we had a table outside so people were able to pick up the materials that they wanted. Uh, yes, um, certainly in-person programming was suspended. Um, we did do a lot of Zoom programming during, during COVID. And you know, now we're back to, to, to normal, except we still do a lot of Zoom programming because people want Zoom programming. That's basically you know what's happened. And that certainly wasn't thought of when we did the strategic plan, you know, three years ago, but you know, plans are made to be adapted. And that's what you have to do. Thank you. Um, can I, first of all, before I ask the next question, please go over the three. Can I have a show of hands of people who do not, does, does anybody here not have a strategic plan? 
one. Okay. Uh, um, where is the last part? Oh, what advice would you give to that uh, library who do not have a strategic plan? We've got a good size, you know, good representation here of a larger library, medium size and small, and they all have them. So I don't believe that that's a reason not to have one. But uh, can you educate on why it's a good idea? You know, when you heard it done that. I'll go back to what I said, where where we didn't have one, and again, we're not librarians, so unfortunately, we're not right. I mean, we lean heavily on our director, but but we're the ones running the show. She works for us, but and and I mean, I told you I have I have a habit of going to a lot of libraries just to see what they do, but I'm still that's making me a librarian, and 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 I think that you know if I go back to when when I was on, on the executive board for that year when Robert White was around. And he just adamant that electronics is just that's nothing. It's just it's books. Everything's books, and it's just. And I recognize it's not. And and my point was that it's shame. I'm an engineer by training, so and I like to think. Yeah, I, I I look out. You know, the big picture. Twenty years, thirty years, forty years from now, and and will people all be reading up books? And maybe they will. Maybe they're still there's always going to be reading books, but there's going to be other ways to get. Information or stories or whatever it is you want into your into your brain, whether it's you know audio. I listen to a lot of the audio books I love to Cape Cod a lot, and always an audio book. So my wife hates me, but it's a story. She, yeah. Any more than two characters, she's lost. She just can't follow it. It's a story. Um, but I listen to books just, and it's like it's amazing. You know, I went to from I went from tapes to CDs to now downloading from my phone, right? And it's like, who would have thought about that? I don't know, until I think it's like 20 years ago. Who would have thought that? You know, I just I just put it on my on my download, it takes about three seconds to download it, and I'm ready to go. And without and without that plan in place, you you would never do that. Um absolutely about the plan. I am also the treasurer on our board. And so for me and my director would laugh as I say this. This is a really good tool if you need to discuss getting funding over a third of mil, which we typically have had in the past. It shows that we are using our money directly for what the town is asking for. So it has been a really, really useful strategic um, tool for us to say, we asked, and this is why this funding is so important because we filled this need for our town. Um, so I highly recommend it. Also, my piece of advice would be, it's not, it's, it's, yes, it's a long process and it sounds daunting, but it doesn't have to be. And so once you jump in, I, it really kind of rolls off itself. And I totally agree with them. The gentleman who said, we collected everybody's strategic plans too, took a look, even some of the format, we saw one that we liked and we kind of modeled it off. And there's a lot of information out there to make it easy. The truth is even libraries that don't have a strategic plan, they have a plan, it's called a budget. Mm -hmm. It's an annual, program to, to spend money on what we pay less for. So, so I would say everybody's got a plan. Why is a strategic plan so important? And, and I would have to say it's because although you can predict the future, you can and should plan for it. Because that's the way that you will be better at doing whatever you feel your library should be doing. And I, I would have to say it's the it is the responsibility of the trustees to step up and participate and craft a plan, whether they use a consultant or not. Um, it, it really I have to say the burden falls on the trustees, and it's why you have volunteered as a trustee. Um, so that's that's just uh, my my point of view. I think it's a valuable thing to do, a valuable exercise, and I think the library will, your library will be better for it. Have all of you found that to be the case? I just can I just expand on something that Lauren said about using the strategic plan in the for the financing. Um, it, it's a great tool because it spells out in in writing what the community is asking for, and if your mayor and council 
is aware that you're responding to what the community is asking for, it should be easier to get funding. I never miss an opportunity in a meeting when I speak to the board, I really am speaking to the mayor. <laughs> I'm pointing out things that, you know, things from the community and accolades to the library from the community. And I know that the whole board knows about it, but I'm just making sure that the mayor knows about it as well. Absolutely. Uh, now that you've got a plan in place, what I discussed before, who, who is responsible for it, you mentioned that very well, but what tools do you use to measure and make sure you're on track? Uh, is there doc, uh, is, do you documents that you keep or uh, on the big spreadsheet I myself, do you do that sort of thing? But you know, how, how, do you, how do you monitor the progress? Yep, you want to go first? The goals in the strategic plan should be specific and measurable. That's very important. So um, you should be able to look at the, the goal and say, yes, I did achieve it, or we're working towards it, but these, what, these need to be done before we can achieve it. But they really should be finite. You know, they, they should have a specific goal that you're working towards. So we have our director craft tactical plans. Um, she usually does one for the whole year. So there's a rough idea of where we're headed. And then she looks at them monthly, sometimes quarterly. And within these tactical plans, we match them against the goals. So we know that we're working towards them. I also really, um, this is kind of how my brain works, and so that's why we put it together, but we use these tactical plans to then approach our friends when we need to buy things that go, or we need to fund a program that's going to fit into what we want. Um, it's a really good way to also take advantage of new things that are happening out there. So if we know we need a tactic against our goal around technology, you know, we, we were thinking about maybe doing a talk about AI that our technology um, committee is considering. So it's, it's, that's how we do it. And that's why we check in. Usually we'll talk about it monthly, but you, quarterly, we end up kind of looking at, okay, what are the programs that went against this? Did we purchase anything? Did we increase here? Did we have the staff do a training that fits under it? Um, and then we kind of wrap it all up at the end of the year. So looking at uh, somebody else's plan, so I'm not sure anybody's here from Bergenville, but that's a plan that I reviewed and they take a slightly different approach. So they have goals and objectives, and then they also add in something that they call activities. And these activities are shorter term things that uh, you know when you accomplish something because if they're quite specific uh, and it's almost like a checklist in order to achieve this goal or this objective that I've mentioned out, this is what specifically I'm going to do. And I think the key here is it's measurable, and if you can time frame it, that's even better. I mean, we had a number of, uh, in the last plan, uh, one of the goals was to improve the infrastructure of our, our library. There were certain repairs that were needed. There were certain capital investments that were needed. We needed a new HVAC system. We needed a new roof. And um, as soon as the plan was developed, we started working on that because we knew it was probably a multi-year project to get these two large projects done. Um, but that's, you know, that is the key, I think. The, the objective should be clearly stated, they should be measurable, and if you can agree on a time frame to accomplish it even better. Uh, I think, uh... Laura mentioned that that yeah, the public was informed. Uh, how, uh, how once you're you're completed, how is the strategic plan presented to the public? Uh, or in, is there any case where it wasn't? So we presented our strategic plan at our friends meeting. We also had our council liaison and a few of us went to the council meeting when she was presenting the strategic plan to the mayor and council. Um, we did publicize that we were holding sessions around the strategic plan and encouraged people to come to the board meetings. 
you know, getting a huge turnout at our board meetings, but we're trying to change that. Um, so we we really tried to open it up as much as possible, and then we we disseminated it as much as we could. We sent it back to every single person who had taken our survey. So we collected the email list. Anybody who had the survey got it delivered in their inbox with a special thank you note that was from our board president and our director um, and our planning committee. And then you know we publicized it on social. We put it in the town newsletter. The school sent it out for us again. It basically just retraced all of the steps that we did to get the data for the survey. Okay. Uh, you, met, you all mentioned that uh, it was important to involve the staff in the strategic plan process. Um, how did you go about gathering that information from the staff? Um, and how did that get incorporated? Was it interviews? Did they do surveys? What have you? We have one of the focus groups we had was the, uh, the librarians, that the staff in general uh, focused on the librarian, the people with library degrees, but the uh, circulation staff was there too. All the trustees and administration staff will be part of the strategic plan committee. So their input is there. Those people will be chosen as leaders of the staff by the director. But um, they, they will be an integral part of the strategic plan committee. Um, in addition to our director, we invited our children's librarian to sit on the committee, but then all of our staff were surveyed and their thoughts were collected and presented. Yeah, at, uh, in Westwood, it's really, I would have to say, the director who does uh, you know, communication with the staff to bring out their ideas and then brings that to the strategic plan committee. That's how it works. That concludes the questions that. that have been presented ahead of time. Uh, do any of you have any questions right now that you'd like to ask or any opinions you'd like to share? Lisa. <laughs> Larry. Uh oh, uh oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> um, I'm just curious. So, what is the company doing? Like, what's their process? We heard out. They, the other three panelists, their process of walking through, and which, you know, I've also done. Um, and that's how we started doing it with, you know, focus groups and paperwork and surveys. Yes, because we did years ago. It was so expensive. Um, and we didn't have the money in the budget. So, like, what are you getting for your money? Is what I'm saying. Like, what, how, what's their, pro I'm just curious, like, picking your brain, what's their process of hearing um, our process of surveys and paperwork? I'm just curious. Okay. Um, like you, what you I'm going, I'm going to put your on the spot. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, Nora is here, and Nora is newly appointed chair, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. Okay, the groups that will be there, um, really the right questions to ask uh, in order to elicit responses that are, we don't want to leave the, the responses. We really want to ask the questions um, so we really get honest answers, you know, from, from them. They're also meeting with us in person several times, um, get to know us better. Um, they're doing also research on the town and where the town is and where the town is going in terms of population, in terms of population makeup, which is very, very important. Um, and, and that's basically why, that's basically the expertise that we are relying on from that. Are you getting anything out, Nora? No, I, I think you're right. They're um they're coming three times to, for the whole board to talk to them as an overview, as a board focus group, and at the end to present their, let's see, uh, like you said, they will guide all the whole process. Um, they're going to, they're having a focus group. They're coming to do focus group, I think, with the staff. Um, 
and they're writing the final plan. They will write the plan. They're writing the final right. plan. And as Larry said, they're doing a deep dive into the community and the library, and they'll be, um, you know, putting together that data and interpreting that data for us. And I guess um, what, what Larry said also, uh, what, what we've been talking about is they also, in the proposals, just talked about forward thinking. What's the future? They even mentioned something which I don't know how I feel about, but there was something in the proposal. I'm just saying, I'm not saying for us, but they were talking about more automation. You know, I'm thinking of what about staff, but I, they're just saying, what is the future? And they're professionals. They know what's out there in the world. So what we feel. Thank you. So how often do they check in with you then? So is it a, it's a six month process pretty much or nine month process? So is it like once a month they're, they're showing you what they gather every three months? Like how are they check you back? more frequent than that. Really. Okay. Once it's, it's a lot of work to achieve in a six month period. I would certainly like to have the strategic plan finished by the end of December. Um, so there is a lot of work. It, it is, they, they're really going to be very hands-on and not, um, you know, a way there'll be lots of, there'll be some in-person meetings. Mm -hmm. There are going to be a lot of Zoom meetings because one person's in somewhere in New England and one is out in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. so, there, so there will be a lot of Zoom meetings and exchanges of ideas that way. Right, and they are coming personally a number of times, but as Larry said, they'll also be guiding us um, through every part of the process. So when we do our focus groups, you know, they'll give, give us an idea of how they're going to almost train us, can consult with us how to lead those, those focus groups. And we have done it before. It's not like we have no experience, but we so they're going to guide us through the whole process. Yeah, they're professionals and know how to guide us through the process. I like what you said, actually, um, in regards to hiring a professional, right? So I'm just a citizen, right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a promotion. I have a full-time job. I'm very active in the community. And when this came up, you know, when you look at the seven people around the table and everybody's working or doing their own thing, and we have one director with one, one full-time staff member, mm -hmm. You know, the last thing I want to do is look for another director when, when she burns out from trying to do this on her own. Um, so I took a page from um, what I'm told in my professional life and how I believe we should work is, you know, there are people who do this for a living. They, they know what to do. They know how to gather the information. They know who to pull. Obviously, we're going to be hands on and, you know, be right there with the, with, with the company that we decide to hire. Um, but at the end of the day, we just don't have the bandwidth. I, you know, being being involved in the community, and, and I like what you said about like finding those leaders. So I am the chair of the rec. I am the president of the library trustees. I'm the president of the rescue squad. I can't be anywhere else, yeah. right? So I mean, I could pull people, but at the end of the day, I could I I will tell you that this is going to be a very big learning experience for myself for our director, for the board. And then, you know, maybe in three years, we'll, we will tackle this on our own. Um, but I think this first one, I, I, you know, for us, um, you know, we didn't, we're not spending quite as much, at, you know, our budget wasn't really that that high. Um, and we're in the process of just still interviewing. And but, a smaller lot. Right, and yeah, we're, 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 small. we're tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the last thing you want to do is um, is for anybody else. Can I share, just share a story? Um, yeah, I started with once upon a time. All these stories. Once upon a time. I was talking some, with some friends and relatives, and we were talking about hiring for personally, you know, amongst us, a financial consultant. And one of my friends says, well, I'm not going to pay them. I can pay them and do it by myself. And my feeling is I don't I don't mind paying because I don't have the expertise to do it myself. Right. The same thing is people go to a doctor, you pay a doctor. 
you can't do it yourself. And to me, it's really part of the same thing. If you, if you really want a professional to do it, sometimes you need the paper. And we will be very involved. They're involving us as well. So it's not like we're just giving it to them and we're not going to have any idea. They're, and actually, I used the word the other day. They're empowering, they're helping us and empowering us to do it as well. I just want to say something else. And, and you know, one of the things we talked about when we meet and, and talked about our strategic plan the last time is the sustainability of our library all right and so in our plan we have what we feel we need in terms of financial resources to continue the programs and the services that we provide unfortunately we have reduced staff over the last three years um we have two less full-time staff members now compared to three years ago because now we look at, at how, what, what percentage do we spend? And, and I think this is for smaller libraries. Staff accounts for about 75% of the total expenses. And you know, we try to allocate at least 11 to 12% on um, you know, acquisitions, on, on books and electronic resources. And the other 12, 13% is really operating expenses. And that is the least the challenge. Um, our um, our budget really hasn't gone up in three years. We get a little, you know, we get a little bit more than a third of a mill, but it's set at a almost a fixed amount in the last three years. So sustainability of uh, public libraries, not just for Westwood, but really it faces many, many of the smaller libraries. It's hard to incorporate that in the strategic plan, but it's certainly something that, that we've thought about in the last three times that we've done on this. Hey, um, thank you. We have a little bit of time left, and um, if there's nothing else on the strategic plan, I, uh, I have some of the questions that were asked in our last meeting. So this is kind of the strategic planning and more section of the program. Um, and, and there were a couple of questions that, that came up that uh, met with the questions. The uh, topics came up, a lot of questions came out about them. And to be fair, I've been a trustee for about uh, just short of Larry's 100 years. And um, I, uh, I learned a lot. And one of the things, a couple of things that came up and generated some discussion were, um, how many members of your board can be on a committee? Larry made a, made a statement about it earlier, but I I would like to reiterate that um, in that you, know, you can only have less than one half of your people on a committee. We have a board in Park Ridge of seven people. Therefore, any committee can only have three trustees on it uh otherwise as far as it becomes a board meeting um and i i see a lot of heads nodding so i guess i probably was the only person who didn't know that and it wasn't on that board. <laughs> but um one of the questions that came up is do committee meetings are committee meetings generally open to the public if, if, if we've never done that and the reason think we do it, it's only it won't, it's never an official meeting because it's only three people, so it's not a board meeting, as you said. So we've never we've never been asked, and I wouldn't see any reason to have it. The same thing here, our our board meetings are not open to the public. However, the results of that meeting are reported to the entire board in open session. And are reflected in the minutes. Uh, again, you must be reading the questions. Are those reports done verbally or are they written? Like I said, I mentioned before that we're gonna we're gonna have a review of our uh, of the um oh. <laughs> <I'm just tired>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Our bylaws, bylaws, yeah, Lauren did some video about bylaws. And and right now the bylaws require 
that any subcommittee meet and we have to, it's supposed to give a written report. We don't do that. We've never done that. I saw the reason to do that. I'll change the bylaw to reflect that. Hopefully, I will. They're all given verbally, except for the finance committee works up a budget, and that budget is presented. Proposed budget is presented to the board, and obviously that's in writing. It was just to read all the numbers, but it's not be able to fully understand that it is. That's exactly what we do too. If it's not a complicated matter, it's just a verbal. But sometimes when we're discussing one of the things like when we were reviewing our bylaws, you know, there were a few notes about these are the sections to look at, and this is what the committee recommends, but most of the time it's verbal. Yeah, we do pretty much the same thing. So we do have regular committee meetings. I you mean, know, our budget committee meets at least quarterly and, and depending on what's happening in the, the year. Uh, we need uh, more often than that. Uh, the results of those meetings uh, are reported by a member of the budget committee at the board meeting. It is reported and it's made a number of minutes. Uh, so, uh, and, and the same thing is true with the building and grants committee, uh, which also meets at least quarterly, and we do the same thing there. And so, the committee makes a report at the next board meeting, and that's in the grants. That's the way it is. We do not have all of the media. Do you uh, have a, does your personnel committee review, do a review of the director? Yes, <laughs> they coordinate it. Um, they, we do it through a survey, the personnel committee coordinates it, and then they ultimately, after the board agrees on what that review is, they ultimately deliver the review with our board president. Uh, I would say we should, and we don't. Uh, we have not done a review of our director. You know, I, I, I would have to say I, I believe it's responsibility of those personnel committee to do that. Uh, one, um, the budget committee uh, does, you know, they, I, I think we're all aware that the municipality has no official say in what we spend our money on and by how we they give, give us what they're obligated, but they have really no say on how we spend it. But it was asked whether anybody do budget committees meet with the borough administrator or the council liaison. I can speak for my own, and the answer is absolutely not. Uh, I don't know what everybody else says. Um, we do not prior to our budget presentation. Um, we actually, for a little while, did have our council liaison on the budget committee, but that has since been changed. Um, yeah, so we, we don't be with them prior to discuss it. We, we don't either, given the, uh, the third of the mill number, we work up questions from that. Um, we, the finance committee, draws up a budget, approved by the board, and then submitted to the town. And then subsequent to that, since we get more than a third of the mill, there is a meeting between the, um, the director, the treasurer, and the president with either the mayor or the entire town council and town administration as the manager at all. I should clarify our process too. We um we have to prepare the budget and submit it, but then we go to the council meeting and our director presents our budget. We typically were funded over a third of mill, but since our third of the mill went off this year, we actually didn't have to ask for more money, but that's not the reality. It's not our budget committee that needs to get um to be active with the board administrator, but for capital improvements, I mean, there is a uh a, a capital request that we make every year for building uh, improvements, repairs, and whatever. We, we actually did a survey last year. Uh, we used a uh, company called LAN to do a survey of the library um, because we were not getting as responsive uh, treatment from the town engineer. And we thought that it would be a good idea to have an independent organization assess the library and 
needed to be done. Uh, and as a result of that, we, uh, we have met a number of times, um, primarily with the borough administrator, although sometimes the uh, borough CFO is also in the meeting, uh, to see if we can all agree on uh, a schedule or time period to get um, essential things done. That definitely did work when we needed a new roof and when we needed a new HVAC system. But there are other things that the library needs on almost a regular basis because you know, the library dates back to 1939, there were certain things that need to be done. So those types of meetings do happen, uh, but not um, presentation of the budget other than uh, what, what we're required to, to be able to do. I have one question. Yes. Um, I have a question about alternates, and I don't know if anyone else can contribute. We have kind of a sticky situation. Our superintendent hasn't uh, appointed an alternate. The mayor does. And now we're having a lot of executive sessions, and some of the board members are a little put off because the mayor's alternate is, is a little bit more vocal than a lot of the, the board members. So I'm wondering that the statute does seem to indicate that an alternate can doesn't vote, but appears at all meetings. And I'm wondering if there's somehow a way to to not allow them at the executive session, or 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 um, I mean, you can't tell them not to speak, but but it's becoming you know some of the members again are are a little upset because they're they have no voting uh, ability, but they're yeah, they're really voicing their. They, they vote. The mayor. Well, the mayor does vote. The mayor does vote. Then, uh, but if 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 a representative and the mayor is there, the mayor is with the alternate, and and the mayor kind of receives, yes, and the alternate, yes. you know, is rallying for what she wants, and and everyone's a little confused, and you know, so I wondered how it's political, but you know, the worst case that the mayor and the school superintendent Can't are point. full members of the board the mayor and the school superintendent may, may. choose to appoint a surrogate in their house right and there in in our town the school superintendent has always appointed a surrogate and the mayor has attended if the mayor is if the mayor is not there they are entitled to appoint somebody to in their place. Right. If the mayor brings somebody, right, they have to sit as part of the public the audience? Okay. and dine okay. at the table okay. at the meeting. Okay. And so would they appear at an executive session? No, no. no. If the mayor if is there. Closed, if it's a closed okay. session, only the board, the mayor, the appointee the superintendent right. are part of that, but members of the public. Or not. Okay. Okay. And if this and if and if the closed session is personnel about yes. the director, the director also leaves. Yes. And it's only right. 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 Okay. okay. I'm sorry, I didn't realize they, they were both there. They both come, they yes, both I'm there sorry. and uh yeah, so she doesn't vote, well, obviously, yeah. but um, she talks a lot. She talks yeah. a lot, and then and then sometimes the mayor, if he has an opinion, will use her to, to bolster that. So it's the two so somebody, against somebody the board. Talk to this. So that creates rather. Yeah. Yeah. You know, back to my limit on how long she can talk. Exactly. No, when she's very vocal. Yeah, but you know, she's saying say you have five minutes or whatever, and that's it. Yeah, and we yeah. Have, they can do that. I know you might not be They do. It's a little bit different when the mayor does talk. And, and this is his decision, yeah. right? So the mayor does come to some of our meetings, but his preference and his decision is the ultimate should go on certain things during the meeting because that person is more intimately involved in the, in the regular board uh, activities and business. That's his decision. So even though he comes, he almost comes as a member of the public right. in that regard. So he doesn't. He doesn't vote. He allows his alternate to vote because she's there all the time. Okay. But it's either or. It's either yeah, right. It, 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 that's right. Yeah. It's either or. Yeah. On your agenda, you should have a, a spot on the agenda for comments from the public. 
and it's that is where they need to be limited to make their comments. They as the alternate, as the as the, as long as the mayor is He's there, independence. and they need bring somebody with him okay. for her, yeah. that yeah. If they are members of the public, and the only time they have a right to speak is when the line on the agenda says it's now time for it's the open, public open to speak. Okay. And the board has a right to set right. time limits. Yeah. As they did with everyone else. Hour, you can say the public is first to speak for three minutes. But I mean, is it not true that under no circumstances is the mayor and that alternate come to an executive or an executive meeting? Right. right, and that's that's the issue that's now. You, have your issue no. you mean a closed yeah. session? Closed session. But and they were limits. Yeah, yeah, the mayor, but yeah. not the, not the mayor. alternate. The vocal um, alternate. Right. <laughs> you know, he's vocal on Facebook and vocal at the meetings and, and a little too opinionated. So the meetings get drawn out and the mayor. Double, you get double take. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because some of the members have stated that that situation and then there's there's been disagreement. So thank you. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Strong. Yeah. Uh, we want to come to a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Not to a meeting. I'll make her sorry. <laughs> yeah, we may have a problem removing her. So I'll, I'll have to be strong with the law. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, you have, yeah. have your guidelines. Have that, that, that could be for the sticky yeah. limit. Yeah. We don't have to buy uh, it. Have it's first. another project. Yeah. And she should agree yeah. what we should put in the. That's oh my irony. Yeah. Right. Talking about corporate America and stuff like that. Does your board have an attorney? Yes. yes. Because sometimes if you say you can't speak, it could cause friction between the town and the board and the board. If you have an attorney who cites the law, it, it, I think it helps diffuse the conflict. I have tried because I am an attorney and I've tried explaining this to them and they don't want to hear from me anyway. Just get a library attorney. I know, I know. I've tried to be diplomatic and delicate. And, you know, I've read the statute. It's personal. So. It's good news, though. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to jump in. Michelle Stricker. Oh, she is from the State Library. She is logged on. She's been following this delicious discussion <laughs> all evening. And she just wants to confirm that it is correct. The mayor, um, if the mayor is present, the alternate is just a member of the public. Just as a footnote for you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Michelle, Thank you so much. Yeah. Amy, does she want to say anything? Yes, we're saying. Let me see what she's like, but okay. Maybe it's uh, checking, but uh, while we're waiting to get an answer here, uh, I'd just like to do a couple of administrative things. Uh, number one, uh, you will be asked, you will be receiving uh, an email from the uh, Swiss Doc, our wonderful Buckles liaison. Uh, regarding an evaluation form, please, please take the time to complete that. Uh, we're very conscious of what you have to say, good, bad, or different. Uh, these programs come mostly from what you folks tell us you want to have presented to you. Uh, we want to hear, we, we uh, have all of these programs basically based on, on what you say. So please complete that uh, evaluation. Uh, you will we'll receive a certificate from uh, Darlene uh, in, the, in, the, in the email uh, so that you can present it to your director to show that you've gotten your hour and a half of the Darlene system, uh, hour and a half credit towards your requirements. Um, no, okay. Um, so I think we're that's it from us. Again, I want to one for our round table. When is it? Yes, I'm going to. When is it? When's the round table? Happy Monday. Twenty fourth. 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 Twenty fourth.
the 24th. Yeah. Um, we, well, a couple of things we, a couple of years ago, we decided that we wanted to create round tables so that uh, trustees could come and share their views on a particular subject. Uh, it's been a very successful situation. Uh, we have a couple of folks here who attended a lot of them. Pat Lynch, uh, and he's a cheerleader for us. Uh, and we have one on the, the 24th of May. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you may be sick of Larry and me, but we're going to be the facilitators for this one. So that's, may that's a great. <laughs> so uh, it would be good to know what the subject is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Help me, Rhonda. <laughs> oh, that's good. Relationships with your municipal officials. Uh, we've already had one person indicate that right now. Uh, you know, this, there, there's, it, it's, they're, they're good sessions. Uh, we, the, the purpose of them is to share. Uh, we. Larry and I and, and Mike, uh, the three of us, kind of an alternating facilitations. Uh, we try to stay somewhat on topic, but we're not we're not against drifting off. If you have something relevant to add or to say, uh, it's very participatory. It will be done over. The, it'll be a Zoom exercise, uh, but we really would like you to come and. Uh, Everybody gets some good knowledge, everybody gets to share. You can do some visual networking, and it's uh, they're really very, really very effective. If you'd uh, like to, if you haven't already, and, and you'd like to receive our newsletter, uh, which is a quarterly event plus other information about trustees, uh, up front, Darlene has a little blue form that you can fill out. Uh, to basically say who you are, your library, and your email address, because that's how we uh, contact all of you. Um, again, I want to thank Larry, Dennis, Lauren, and Mike for a terrific panel. Uh, thank you all for coming. Mimi, thank you for hosting our wonderful event. Adele, thank you for your commentary. Uh, and we have a couple of folks in the back. I know uh, Caitlin Ho and is back there doing all of the magic to make all of this work so that we're all seeing what we want to see. Uh, and uh, then I had nothing else. Thank you very much. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you on the 24th. And have a great night home. Let's go back to the people. Thank you.